My name is Mike Healy, and I'm chairman of the Public Safety Committee, and we'll call the committee meeting of July 7th, 2021 to order. The first uh, order of business is roll call. Mr. Healy? Here. Mr. Dibble? Here. Mr. Decker? Here. Mr. Harris? Mr. Havey? Here. Mrs. Hopkins? Here. Mr. Crandall? Here. Six members present, one absent. Thank you. Quorum being present, uh, we'll uh, proceed with the approval of the minutes of June 2nd, 2021. I'll entertain a motion, Mr. Dibble, seconded by Mr. Havey. Any corrections, uh, deletions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye, aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. Now uh, we'll go to our department heads reports. Uh, first up is uh, Public Defender's Office. Uh, Public Defender Barb Kelly is not with us uh, today, but we have her uh, assistant. Uh, JR, would you introduce yourself to everybody? JR Santana Carter. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? There we go. So, first, the monthly report numbers are up. More than double in many places based on us being kind of post COVID. Uh, it'll take a while to see whether they'll continue to be up with justice courts um, pretty much being wide open now. They are still backlogged with a lot of cases, so I expect a lot more cases coming through our office and the DA's office. Any questions on the reporter, the numbers? Anything else you wish to highlight? Um, not from the numbers, but I do have another request. All righty. A request to create and fill a position for a paralegal. Uh, the main purpose of the position is to help deal with the uh, new laws regarding discovery. The DA's office is required to turn over a voluminous amount of information uh, to defense counsel now. And so while they have that mandate, as defense counsel, we have a mandate to review that um, those items before the, uh, any plea bargain is made or the case resolved. And so uh, we need someone to marshal all that information. They have to be very good with technology. They're gonna be working in conjunction uh, with the IDT department because there's a lot of different video formats and things of that nature, but it's a standard um, paralegal position. The great thing about this position is that it's 100% state funded under a rail hearing. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion, Mr. B uh, Havey. And Mrs. Hawkins second. All right, uh, now uh, the discussion. Uh, Mr. Barnes, did you have something we should discuss? Uh, yeah, you, uh, this, this is obviously a new position. Co correct. And you, and you say it's perfect, uh, it's uh, paid for and uh, and full by the state? Correct. Uh, would this position be uh, permanent? In other words, it's expected to be long-term? Yes. Uh, is the, the state guaranteeing that they're going to support it long-term? The state, I don't think they give those guarantees, but I'll tell you with Harrell Herring litigation that led to all this funding, part of the reason that those laws were enacted to give all these county funds is to avoid being sued. So I don't see, unless they create a whole nother system of public defense, them pulling that funding anytime mm -hmm. soon because they know it's a likelihood to lead to litigation. And as with most star positions, if the funding goes away, then we're, uh, we're always open to re-examination of those positions and whether Correct. we wish to keep them or not. Well, thank you. I, uh, my concern on, on a lot of these things is that uh, it's funded now, funded next year. After that, we're only going to pay 75%, and the next year they're going to pay 50%, and uh, that leaves us in a, kind of in a hole. I so hopefully, that, hopefully that doesn't, isn't going to happen, but uh, we should be on the lookout for it. Yep. 
if I can just make a comment on that too, this is Terry Ross, County Treasurer. Um, the Harrell, Harrell hearing funding is different than state aid. So if we can just make that statement clear because it's indigent legal services and it is the result of a lawsuit that happened within the um, within our, you know, their, our state and they have set aside new, I mean, just um, an enormous amount of money for Hurl Herring. So Hurl Herring is the funding that, if you remember correctly, we get different distributions every year. We're up to distribution 11 this year and they have maintained that consistently and given us more money every year. So it is a little different than state aid, Gary. I just wanted to point that out to you. It's not tied to all those other grants like a state aid grant. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So you think the, the funding is more reliable than? I believe that the settlement had to make it more reliable if that's a good yeah. answer. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Uh, Mrs. Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Healy. I just wanted to make sure I was reading this correctly. This is a non-union position? Correct. Okay. Mr. Dibble. Been approved by the county administrator? It has. It's been approved by myself, Mr. Buttinger. I just noticed that the form is a little outdated because it doesn't have our signature yes. lines on it, but we both looked at it and had numerous discussions with Ms. Kelly and we are good to go with this. And we'll be moving this to personnel committee. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next is uh, Emergency Management uh, Fire Director Jeff Lucky. Good afternoon, Jeff. Apologize for my appearance. I was a fire late last night and did some additional fire investigation this morning, so I don't have my dress clothes on. I'd just like to touch on a couple things. Um, you know, been a couple fires uh, recently, nothing uh, particular to, to note about them, but I did get a good chance to work with an electrical engineer on one of them, which is very interesting, learning from a different perspective. Uh, and that was a fire over in New Hudson. Uh, the Firemen's Association uh, the, for the convention, uh, the change up this year with the COVID concerns going forward, they are only having the business meeting, which is this next Wednesday at four o'clock is registration. Six o'clock will be the meeting. They're not having the other events, the firematic events and or uh, the parade on Saturday, but that's the latest from that. Uh, Cuban Memorial did suffer, uh, they were testing their backup generator um, in the process, there's a transfer switch, an automatic transfer switch. The automatic transfer switch failed. And when that failed, they weren't able to bring the commercial power back on either. Um, so they had a period of time without power. Uh, they followed all their plans. Um, they asked me to come over and assist. I was looking at possibly getting an outside generator. Um, they were able to, to repair uh, the generator, um, the main generator. Local company was able to put a bypass switch in. Um, so they, they're going to be uh, on a uh, not automatic for a period of time until they get that replaced. But they did a great job. They were following their policy and procedures. Um, really, that's all that I have on my report. Any questions? Any questions for Jeff? Uh, I got one, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Fire, your fire investigators. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have a full complement of of fire investigators at this time yeah we we did meet um we haven't got the agreement letter back from them so i and we'll present them but uh, we are adding two more uh people on to our fire investigation this brings back up to our full level and can you outline just uh, briefly the selection process is that uh sure uh we we put an application out uh or a, a job description out to uh, all the fire chiefs um for about a month and a half, two months. Uh, mentioned at various meetings, uh, we had various applicants come back. Uh, we, we as a team met, um, and that's why we had the meeting earlier in the month. Um, on the June 10th, we had a meeting, looked at the ones we thought were the most likely candidates, um, and did an interview with those. 
and two of them have accepted. But we, we haven't got their final letter to them for reply back. So, so in addition to qualifications, does the logistics play any matter in the selection process? Yeah, we were lacking some in the northern part of the county this time. Uh, we just had one resign recently. Uh, another one is gone six months out of the year. Um, and one has been kind of on medical leave. So we're really looking to fill the northern part of the county. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Thank, thank you. you, Jeff. Uh, next up is uh, District Attorney Keith Slap. Uh, Keith's not with us today, but uh, his assistant Ian Jones is. Good afternoon, Ian. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we submitted the monthly report. There's, in terms of the numbers of felonies and misdemeanors, nothing really of note. You'll notice the violations are down significantly. Um, I did talk to a few members of law enforcement to ask why that is or what they believe that could be. It's really just speculation. I know there's a lot of personnel turnover right now. And it, again, just speculation that might be part of the cause. But that, that is a number that's significantly down. Um, VOPs are, are right in range. The miscellaneous files, I believe there's three fugitive from justice files that came in last month, so that's all there is there. And this, in terms of the special prosecutor, I believe that those were three separate files all from, the, from one defendant, so that's why that number's up a little more than we'd normally see. But that's it in terms of the report. And I don't have anything else this month. Do you think uh, violations might be due partly to uh, all the... Uh uh, criminal justice reforms have occurred uh, in New York State uh, here over the last couple of years that uh, uh, since they probably don't do anything to anybody anyways, they create commits a violation. So you think that might have something to do with the enforcement? You know, that's certainly something that's discussed quite a bit and a conversation that's had quite often. But, you know, Caps are still writing tickets, so I don't, I'm not sure why that's that's down as much as it is. I mean, certainly if you go back into last year in the heart of COVID, tick, the numbers were way down. So I just I just kind of you know took notice of that today. And but these are criminal all criminal violations. Right? Uh, the viol some of them are criminal violations, but a lot of them are just you know run of the mill traffic tickets. So not, there is a lot of turnover. Well, there there is going to be a lot of turnover, and state police i don't know if maybe that's causing some of it just a, a lot of personnel moving around in different positions right now but even still the the uniform troopers are still there so i'm not i'm really not sure why that is i'm i'm trying to find out see if anyone has a good idea that, that sounds good okay. to me, but well, as we'll be right looking now, forward to maybe uh, some further reports on that issue uh any questions for ian anything else you wish to highlight nothing for me okay Thank okay. you. Thanks, everybody. Stop EWI coordinator Brian Perkins is Brian with us. I don't see him, but you got his report with you, and you can always contact him if you have any questions regarding the report, or if necessary, we can bring them up at the next month's public safety meeting. We'll go on to uh, weights and measures. Director Gilbert Green. It's Gilbert here. Let's back up. We lost, uh, forgot Mr. Starks, and how could I do that, Mr. Starks? Probation Director Robert Starks. Good afternoon, Bob. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me anything about weights and measures. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, we might. I, I, I may or may not be able to answer. Well, thank you. Thank you. I have my monthly report here in front of you. Anything you wish to highlight? Well, as you can see, the uh, <clears throat> reopening of the courts hasn't quite hit our department yet. We're still not getting a lot of uh, supply into our uh, system. But from the sounds of things, it's coming. So our numbers are, I, I don't know if it's historic low, but certainly low compared to what they have been over the past few years. So. 
Okay. No questions for Bob on his report? All right. You have an RFP here? I do. A request to fill position. I have a vacant supervisor position available that I would like permission to fill. And then uh, if there's any vacant positions, such as senior mm -hmm. or probation officer, that follows from that uh, filling of that position, I'd like permission to fill those as well. Okay, I'll entertain a motion, Mr. Dibble and Mr. Havey. All right, any discussion? Sure. Yes, Mr. Dibble. Well, you got to look on the back. Here. I think there's a second page there. This, this one has been signed off by the uh, administrator and the personnel officer. Is that correct, Madam Administrator? Uh, that's my signature. You can uh, read it. Okay. No other discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. Thank you. Now, you don't want to answer the questions on weights and measures. I know. I yeah. Okay. Would not want to give you a wrong figure. There you go. Thanks, yeah. Bob. Uh, as I said before, Mr. Green's not here, uh, so save any questions you have for him on his report uh, you, until next month, or you can make contact him directly in the interim. And next up, we have the sheriff, Rick Whitney. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Sheriff. Uh, I submitted my monthly report. If you have any questions. Any questions for the sheriff on his report? Mr. Grace. Uh, you had a pod that was non-functional. Has that situation been resolved? What's, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's working. We haven't opened it up yet. We're, we will soon. But it, yeah, the electric is working now. We wanted to make sure it was working totally before we move people back in. Has any, uh, any work been done to make sure that that doesn't happen again to the other pods? Is, is there a similar situation that could happen to the other pods? I believe that was because of the roof leak. So they have fixed the roof. Uh, I'm sure it would it could probably use some something different. It probably could use a new roof if we ever got a chance but. yeah I think DPW examined the whole roof and there were more leaks found that were addressed I know they are looking at the jail as a total for their projects their capital projects moving forward and I believe we were, we were lucky this was a, was a circuit board that was replaced and it saved us quite a bit of money it could have been a lot worse so. thank you thank you any other questions for the sheriff on his report or operations Harry Nunn, Sheriff, anything you wish to highlight? Uh, nothing on the report. I will mention we did uh, we did receive a thank you card from the Wellsville PD. Uh, a couple of our deputies assisted them with the uh, distraught person that was in the river up there a couple of weeks ago. And a couple of our deputies helped go out and uh, get the person out of the river. So we did get a thank you note from the chief. Oh, it's always nice to be thanked. Yes. Anything on uh, 911 uh, enumeration updates? Or? Uh, he's still working at it. Russ is doing a good job. Uh, he's, he's, he completed Birdsell, so uh, uh, things are going pretty well with that, I think. Okay. And how about the uh, radio uh, system? Uh, as far as I know, I haven't heard anything uh, since we updated everything, so hopefully it's all still going well. Well, most of what I'm hearing on the other end, uh, out and about, has uh, been m mostly a po positive. So thanks to all for their efforts on both both those issues. Uh, I guess we'll move ahead to any RFPs or uh, MOEs yes. you might have. Uh, the first uh, request to fill position I have is for two part-time cooks in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Made by Mr. Dibble, second by Mr. Havey. Discussion? 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay, and the second one I have is a request to fill position is for part-time emergency services dispatchers. I'll entertain a motion, Mr. Decker, was that you? Mm -hmm. All right, Mrs. Hopkins seconded that, did she? Or? Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carry. Uh, and then I have a memorandum for uh, acceptance of a grant. We did get a grant of $135,050 the public uh, safety answering points sustainment grant. So we need uh, a motion to uh, accept and appropriate this. Mrs. Hopkins and Mr. Decker seconded. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried. Sheriff, anything else you nope. wish to bring before the committee's attention? That's all I have at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there any old business to bring before the committee? Any new business to bring before the committee? Anything for the good of the order? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Ms. Uh, that's in support, I believe, of the public safety grant there, the uh, safety answering points sustainment grant. Did you wish to address that, Mr. Crandall, at all? or No, that's been taken care of, I believe. Okay, thank you. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Mr. Decker and seconded by Mr. Dibble. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Adjourned.